Hey guys, it's Tyler Stork from Universal Rackets and this is going to be an amazing video. Do you know why it's going to be an amazing video? Because we are going to be talking about one aspect of your forehand and your backhand that coaches and players do not talk or think about. And that is the backswing. I'm going to be teaching you in this video by adjusting your backswing to the speed of the ball, you are going to be able to have a way more effective, consistent, and more spin on your shots if you would like by only adjusting your backswing. So make sure you stay tuned and again, you will learn new tips, new tricks on how to hit a way more effective ground stroke, return, or drive. So let's get started. So the first thing that I wanna be talking about is the speed of the ball coming at me. Once again, I want you to think about the speed of the ball that your opponent is hitting to you. Your opponent can hit the ball really fast to you, or your opponent can hit the ball really slow to you. We're going to be talking about people who absolutely drill the ball, players who drill the serve at you, players who drill the, th the second shot return at you, so you have to hit a really fast third shot. And this is what I want you to think, and this is gonna change your game, you ready? If a ball ever comes fast at you, you need to take a short backswing. So I want you to think again, if the ball ever comes super fast at me, I want to take a short backswing. A lot of players, they have trouble with players who hit really hard at them. And the reason why is because they are not adjusting prior to contact to the ball with their backswing before the ball comes to them. And what I mean by that is the ball comes really fast, players are looking like this. No, if a ball ever comes super fast at me, watch what I'm going to do. Watch what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do this, this, this. No, just straight back. I'm gonna take a short backswing. Now, the opposite if a player hits the ball slow at you. If the player hits the ball slow at you, instead of taking a super short backswing, I want you to take a bigger backswing. You're going to take the paddle back further. So now what can you do? Now you can have more swing, more momentum to really hit into the shot. So the first thing again I want you to be thinking about is speed of the ball that your opponent is hitting to you and the shortness or length that you have on your backswing. Now, not only with the take back, now we're going to get into the second step that is going to completely change your game. If you're ever playing a super hard serve at you, I play a lot of people who serve the ball super hard and I have trouble, I get jammed, I can't hit it. And the reason why is because not only I'm taking a big backswing, but I'm taking a big loop. And to all of our subscribers and viewers who are watching this right now, and once again, I love you guys. This amount of support, positivity, enthusiasm that I've been getting for you guys gets me super excited to record these videos for you, okay? This is what I mean. The loop, what I mean is when you take your paddle back, you don't take it just straight back. You don't take it just straight back. This would be more for a slower ball, right? But you take it back and then you drop it down. Once again, when you take the paddle back for your forehand or your backhand or the one-handed backhand, you take the paddle back, but then you drop it down. Why do you drop the paddle? Well, Tyler, why do you, why do you drop the paddle? What do you mean drop the paddle? Well, think about it. There are two things that this ball has to do in order to get over the net and into the court. Number one, I have to hit the ball forward because we have distance. I need to hit it over the net, right? I need to hit it forward. Okay, but if I hit it forward with distance, it's gonna go in the net. We got a net there too, right? Duh. So that's why you want to get under the ball. You make this loop to get under the ball to lift it over the net. By playing with height and too many players, and I don't wanna to get too onto another topic, but too many players, what they do is they go way too low over the net. By playing with some height, it's going to be all right. It gives you more consistency, more margin for error, and gravity, guys, it's going to bring the ball in, and probably you're going to be able to keep it deeper. So play with height, don't be scared to go a little bit high over the net. But that's why I'm saying we get under the ball, okay? So if it is a fast ball coming at me, I keep a short swing and then watch my loop. I'm going to go here and then go forward. So I'm gonna go here, here, and forward. What I want you to think, 
about a ball that's coming really fast at you, look, one is the take back, short take back, two is we call it the drop, and then we swing forward, I want you to think of it like a C. The take back is the top of the C, the drop is the curve of the C, right? So top of the C, curve of the C, and then I swing forward. And guys, once I blow up this channel, I'm going to be at Universal Rackets, we're gonna be getting professional editing done. So I can't wait till my editing guy right now goes and makes this imaginary C, but we're not there yet, we're, we're gonna keep on growing. But once again, here we are, top of the C, we're gonna drop it, you see that little curve, and I'm gonna swing, the C is super small for a fast shot. Now, a slow shot, what are we going to do? Instead of doing a super small C, now we are going to do a big C. Watch, instead of taking my paddle back here and then dropping, I'm taking my paddle back up higher and further back and then dropping. So, the faster the ball comes to you, the smaller you want to make that C. The slower the ball comes to you, the larger you want to make that C. Same thing for the backhand. We'll do it for one hand and two hand. So again, if the ball comes super, super fast, I'm gonna take my paddle back, then I'm going to drop it and then swing. Paddle back, drop and swing. Super, super small C. You guys see that? If the ball comes slow, I'm going to take my paddle back, drop and then swing. Much larger of a C. Did you see that? Let's go. So now, same thing with two hands. If it is a super fast ball coming at me, look, super, short swing, super small C. If it's a slower ball coming at me, I am going to take a much bigger C. So I can have more pace, more power, and get more distance on my shots. So it's going to look a little bit like this. Now, I do not have the Pickle Yogi over there again today. It's the weekend. We have two amazing, beautiful kids that she's watching right now while I'm doing these YouTube videos, but shout out to the Pickle Yogi. However, I'm going to try to pretend that the ball's coming fast at me, okay? So the ball comes super fast at me. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm gonna go here, right? Super short. If anyone ever hits the ball super fast at you, by keeping your swing short, it's going to completely transform your shot. You're gonna be able to get all these hard balls back now by not taking a super big swing, by making your C super small. B slow swing coming at me, watch. Now I am doing a big C. Here we are for the backhand, one hand and two hands. So super fast ball again, I'm keeping it super short. Slow ball, I'm making it bigger. Same thing for the two-hander, okay? The two-y they like to call. Ball's coming fast, look, super short and compact. Well, that was a good shot, right? Here we are, ball's coming super slow. I am making a bigger C, okay? I am making a bigger swing. Now, how do we get that curve of the C, okay? A lot of players, they're going to not get the curve of the C, and that's the reason why they are going to be hitting the ball in the net because they're coming on top of the ball, they're not getting under it. But how do we make that curve of the C? It's very simple, and if you don't already do this, this is going to transform, improve, transform, whatever. This is going to be night and day for your pickleball game. How do we get this curve of the C, right? Top of the C, right? Either, either if it's small or if it's big, here we are, right? And now all we're going to do, here's how you make the C. You guys ready? Once again, here's how we make the C. I'll do this one more time. And again, I've been hearing tons of people making comments saying how I'm repeating myself and my videos are too long and I t say it over and over again. I say one thing, five different things. And yes, I do. I say one thing, five different ways because different tips work for different people. Not one size fits all. I love doing these YouTube videos. On YouTube, the longer it is, the more you can monetize. So that's pretty good as well. And also at Universal Records, we have tons of shorts. So if you guys are into short form videos, make sure to check out all of our shorts. Okay, but once again, here we are. Here's how I make that C, or make the curve in the C. All I'm doing is letting go of my paddle. Same thing for the backhand, letting go of the paddle. Same thing for the one hand, letting go of the paddle. Guys, it's not rocket science. Too many players, what they do wrong is they try to go like this, and this is why they end up hurting their shoulder, their, el their elbow, their wrist, whatever, right? They go here, and then they force themselves to get under. Now they have to slow their shot down because they muscle it in, they can't hit hard. No, all I have to do is take the paddle back and then all I have to do is just release it and drop it. So again, paddle back, release, and then go. 
All that making the sea is, is gravity doing the work. So if it's a small sea, letting gravity go. If it's a large sea, I'm letting gravity go. I'm releasing my paddle. Now, how do we know we are in the proper position for the sea? It is very easy, okay? I got a cue for every single one of you, okay? Are you guys ready for the cue for one of you? You ready? Let's go. So when I take the paddle back and I make my C and I drop it, look, look where my butt cap is pointing. My butt cap is pointing directly to you guys right now because I'm swinging towards you. The butt cap is pointing directly towards your target. So by making a C and releasing your butt cap, one hand, your butt cap, two hands should be pointing directly towards your target. Pretend another way is a laser shining out the center of your butt cap. My laser shouldn't be pointing horizontal because then I would be coming on top of the ball. My laser shouldn't be pointing straight up because then, I don't know, it just looked really bad. I want my laser around 45 degrees. Here's zero, here's 90. I want it at 45 degrees. You guys see the laser? So really try to think, release it, point the butt cap. Release it, point the butt cap. Now, I would drop the paddle literally in this video, but I have this awesome new Invicta Selkirk Control Vanguard paddle, and they just released it, so awesome, so I do not want to drop this beautiful thing. We're actually doing a giveaway, so I'm gonna put the giveaway in the description. I'm going to be giving one lucky winner this amazing paddle for free, so make sure you check out that giveaway, okay? Now, after we do that with our backswing, after we take it back and then we drop, okay? Now, what we have to do with our backswing is we have to make sure, I want you guys to think about taking it back properly. What is the proper take back? How do we know that it's the proper take back regardless of the big C or the small C that we make, okay? So again, I gave you, okay, it's coming super fast, super short, I'm doing a big swing, here we are, bigger C, right? But when I take the paddle back, I want you to think that you want the paddle face facing to the side and you want the paddle tip pointing backwards. That is the proper take back, okay? So in general, the proper take back again is you want the paddle face facing to the side and the paddle tip pointing backwards. Not pointing straight down, it's not pointing vertical, it's just pointing here, okay? By doing that, that's going to ensure that you're in the proper take back. A lot of players, they don't take the paddle back to too much or enough, so they take their paddle back here. That's not the proper position, because again, you want your paddle face to the side and the paddle tip pointing up and backwards, right? Or for the backhand as well. They go like this, paddle face is that way. No, I want my paddle face pointing to the side, paddle tip pointing a little bit upwards, one hand and two hand, so I can really go. Why do you want the paddle uh, tip pointing upwards because when you proceed with your swing, now you can drop it downward. And here's where we are going to get into the next half of this video. And it's going to be by taking the paddle back a certain way, you are going to be able to get yourself more topspin or more slice. So again, we went over first just to review. Faster, smaller backswing, smaller C. We talked about making the C. We talked about how to make the actual C by releasing your paddle super loose for a forehand, for a backhand, one and two hander, right? We talked about the butt cap to ensure that we're in the proper position. Now we have the foundation. Now we are going to build the house on top and play around with it. We are already hitting opponents' fastballs with ease now. We are already drilling opponents' slow balls with ease now because we are adjusting our swing. Now we are going to be able to play around with the certain types of spin that we want to hit by our take back. So stay tuned and let's get started. So actually, before we talk about different spins, we're going to be talking about different heights. So again, just to review, first we went over speeds, now we're going to be going over different heights of balls, and then we are going to be going over spin. So keep on staying tuned. So what do I mean by heights of balls? Well, someone hits a lob serve. I used to hate hitting a lob serve. That means they hit it super high, it bounces up, and I'm taking the ball about here. Typically where players make contact is around here for their forehand or around here for their backhand. Now, regardless of their height or depending on their height will determine a maybe slightly different contact point, but typically it's right around your hip, okay? That's where you wanna make contact. However, when the ball's super high, we need to take the paddle back a tiny bit different. I want you to think from now on when you're playing pickleball, if the ball is coming high, I need to take my backswing back high. 
Once again, if the ball's coming back high, I want to take my paddle back high. If the ball is coming back low, I want to take my paddle back low. The height of the ball determines where I should take my paddle back. If it's super high, my paddle's going to be back up there. Again, if it's super low, my paddle's going to be down here. Now, here's the big thing. Regardless of the height of the ball and regardless of my take back, I still need to make sure that I proceed with the proper C. And this is where players go wrong, and this is where players, they can't hit high balls. The reason why is because it comes back high, I take my paddle back high, and then I go like this, and my ball goes super long. After I take the paddle back super high, I still need to make my C. So instead of my normal C being right here, I'm going to make my C up here. Notice when I take my paddle back again, I'm going to take my paddle back here. I'm still going to drop my paddle and then I'm going to swing. So again, it's super high. Here we are, paddle back. I'm going to drop and then I'm going to swing. Again, ball super high, paddle back. I'm gonna drop then I'm going to swing. You still need to drop the paddle when the ball is super high. And that's where players go wrong. They sky the ball, they can't hit it in because again, they just swing forward. So take that paddle back and drop, still make that C even when it's high and you are going to never have trouble with a high ball again. Same thing with the low ball, okay? So when the ball is lower, what does that mean? If it's lower, that means the more I have to hit up. Once again, if the ball's lower, that means I need to get under it to lift the ball up over the net. So I need to take my backswing a little bit lower rather than I normally would. So again, the ball's low, I wanna keep my backswing low so then I can really drop and get under that ball. Same thing though, instead of the normal C being here, instead of the high C being here, I'm going to be taking a low C now and making it here. So regardless of the height of the ball, you want to take your paddle back at that height, or depending on the height of the ball, you wanna make sure that you take your paddle back at the height of the ball, and then proceed with your swing. So the height of the ball determines where you want to take your paddle back. Once again, if it's super high, take your paddle back up here. If it's super low, take your paddle back down here, but still make sure that you proceed with the swing. Same thing for the backhand. If it's super high, I'm going to take it here. I'm still going to drop my paddle and make my C. If it's super low, I'm going to take it down over here and keep on proceeding with my C. So there we are. So once again, we worked on speed, we worked on height. Now we are going to be talking about spin, okay? Now, if you guys recall previously in this video, I said you wanna take your paddle back, but not only you wanna take your paddle back, but you wanna take your paddle back with the paddle tip facing up. Once again, you wanna make sure that you take your paddle back, not only have the paddle face to the side, but you want the tip of the paddle pointing upward. Now, why do you want the tip of the paddle pointing upward prior to your swing. It's very simple, okay? It's physics. If I take my paddle pointing upward, when I proceed with my swing, my paddle is going to be pointing downward. Again, the more upward my paddle tip is when I take it back, the more downward it's going to be when I drop my paddle. So great hack to try to get under the ball more, to try to get more spin, to increase your top spin is by pointing your paddle tip more upward. If I wanna hit more of a flatter shot, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my paddle back with my tip pointing more horizontal. Now when I proceed through my swing, it's going to be more horizontal. That was the wind. If I want to hit more topspin, instead of pointing my paddle tip back, I'm going to point my paddle tip up. So now when I swing, watch, I'm going to be really able to drop and lift and get under the ball. So I'm going to point the paddle tip up on the take back, and then I'm going to drop, and that's going to increase the topspin that I have. As you see, this is going to give more of a looping ball with a lot of th things that we like to call shape. If you take your paddle back here though, it's going to give more of a penetrating flat ball. So again, by taking the paddle tip back here or here, it's going to determine if I have a more loopy shot or if I have a more flat shot. Now, when someone hits hard to you, you want to have 
more of a flat shot because you don't have time to go from high to low to high. Think the more vertical you swing, the more top spin, the more height, the more shape on your shot you're going to get. The more horizontal you swing, the more the shot's going to go through, less things can go wrong, okay? However, you're not playing with as much spin, as much gravity, so you have to be careful. However, though, again, if someone hits super hard to me, I want my C to be here, super small, so I am not taking the tip of my paddle pointing up. I'm just pointing it back and then again looping it and going forward. So again, by pointing the paddle tip upward, that can increase the shape and the top spin that you have. Now for slice, by pointing the paddle tip a certain way for slice, it can help you generate two times more spin on your forehand and your backhand slice. Now think about it. For your normal ground strokes and drives, what do you think? You go from high to low to high. Same thing for the backhand. I go from high to low to high. However, for the slice, instead of going from low to high, I am going to be going from high to low. Once again, high to low. I'm going to do that one more time. High, okay? What am I going to do? I am going to point my paddle tip upward. Now, instead of dropping my paddle like I normally do, I'm going to just swing forward. Again, for a normal loopy topspin shot like we just went over, I'm going to point my paddle tip up, I'm gonna get under it, and then go. But for a slice, I'm going to point my paddle tip up, and now I'm not going to drop it, I'm going to just go forward. So again, if I had this amazing visual guy that like uh, illustrated my strokes and everything, the topspin would look like this. It would look like a big giant C, right? The slice though, think about the slices in a C, the slice is up top, and then when you go forward, it's literally a line. It's here. And where players go too wrong with the slice is that they swing down. It's not down, it's forward and through. And we have a whole video on that, so make sure you click the link in the description. I'm gonna put the slice video, how to learn, learn how to hit a slice and learn how to return a slice. I'm gonna put that link in the description, right? But again, you wanna point the paddle tip up and then you just want to go forward and through. So I wanna think paddle tip up for the backswing for the slice, and then when I finish, paddle tip forward. Same thing for the forehand side. I wanna think paddle tip up when I take it back, and then when I swing again, I'm going to point my paddle tip forward. One more time, paddle tip up when I take it back, and then I'm going to swing and point my paddle tip forward. So by pointing the paddle tip up for the slice, that's going to double the amount of spin that you hit. But once again, big disclaimer, you're not dropping your wrist and making a C, you're making more of a horizontal line. So the bigger you make the C, the slower the ball you should be hitting, the more of a topspin shot that you should hit by pointing the paddle tip up. The faster the ball that's coming at you, the smaller you should make the C, the more you should swing forward. If it's high, you're going to drop the paddle high now. If it's low, you're going to drop the paddle low. And if it's sliced, you're going to take your paddle tip up now so we can really get under the ball at contact. But then we're going to go forward and we are going to make a horizontal line and you're going to be able to have such a better slice. So once again, if you guys can use all these tips and all these tricks on your backswing, you are going to be able to hit faster, softer, higher, lower and different types of spins on your shots. Now, I hope this video, you enjoyed this video. Once again, my name's Tyler. I'm the owner of Universal Rackets. If you are looking for any type of program in your community, you want pickleball clinics, fundraiser events, corporate events, special events, any types, tournaments, fundraisers, whatever you want, make sure to click the link in the description and you, Universal Rackets representative will get out to you shortly. Have a good one, happy hitting, adjust your backswing, kick your opponent's butt, and I will see you next time on court.